Good morning, everybody. I am Justin Johnson. Disorganized day. Hang on. Go, Justin. Having a disorganized day. Oh, so great to be back with you guys today. Good morning, guys. I'm Tina. Uh, yes, and I said I was Justin, but I'm going to say it again. So, all right, let's start over. Let's start over. Go ahead. Good morning, Fellowship of Faith. I'm Tina Gadini. And I'm Justin Johnson. Yeah, it says so much better. Now all things are right so in the world. So much better. Turn my mic's on. Yep, we're all good. So my busy season is over. Congratulations. So, welcome to the off season. Thank you. I'm just like, chill. And we're up here talking, and it's just chill. And then Steve's like, 20 seconds to go. I'm like, ah! right. And to give you a little insight of how no Tina normally is, she is <laughs> checking every minute to make sure our the four people, the two techs and then us, are in the booth on time so we're not scrambling. So she was the like one who notes was. Notes ahead of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but we're all. It's a brand new world, guys. Yes, it is. <laughs> we're very happy to be back with you guys today. I hope you all enjoyed your Easter last Sunday. I unfortunately was out of town, but I was able to tune in through the live stream and it was fantastic. Ben is amazing. Yes, he is. He's one of my favorite kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm glad you said one of your favorite kids. <laughs> I almost said my favorite kid. He's my favorite boy. Yeah, there. Hey, I there. like that. There you go. Yeah. Yes, you guys uh, obviously have such a good connection as mother and, 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 and son. I'm just like, oh, hey, Justin can't come. Do you mind doing the show? Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. He's so go with the flow. He did, I like he that did too. A last Friday, I think, he did an interview for a scholarship. Yeah. And I'm told that the people that were interviewing him said, thank you for wearing a tie. Like, he got dressed up for I'm like, are wow. people not dressing yeah, up for that's scholarship number, I would say that's number one you dress up for. That in a job interview. Yeah. My dad always said, Dr dress for the job you want. And I don't care if I'm walking into a... So I've heard you know, dress for the job you want. Did you dress up like Superman? <laughs> well, underneath. <laughs> underneath the underneath. suit, yes. There we go. They didn't, yeah, they didn't see that part. But <laughs> I walked into a bank and I applied. And I was wearing a suit and tie. Yeah. And they're like, wow. I, well, you can't hire you because you have no experience, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's cool. Good for him. Yeah. And he chose a college, right? Valpo. He's going to Valpo. We're staying within the family. Uh, I'm so excited for him. It's, it's, he would have done well anywhere. Oh, for sure. But this is just, he's going to thrive. He's yeah. just going to soar, and I'm so excited. So for those of you who don't know, Valpo has a very deep FOF vein. Yeah. Dave went there. I went there. You went there. Now Ben's going there. There's a couple, a handful of other Dave people. Dave Grafe went there. Yeah. Um, Leaguey, one of the Leagueys went there, right? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't Ben. It was the no, other Leaguey. Yeah, Ben went to Bradley. Brian went to. Brian. Br Brian went to Valpo. Sarah, uh, the choruses went there. When Sarah Howder went there for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I don't think that's her name anymore. I think she got married. Sarah, if you're watching, I miss you. <laughs> I want to hug you. Come in person. I want to hug you. Hugs. We like hugs. But yeah, mm -hmm. so Velpo is a very deep vein in FOF, so it's yeah. very exciting that Ben is continuing his education there. I don't even know. What's our... What's our we got two minutes. Okay. Okay. So... Let's get to what we need to talk oh, about. We got a new series, and I'm like excited because it's Corinthians, and Dave says, no, 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 it is. Corinthians 12 through 15. No, no, no. No, oh, oh. no, no. No, oh, no, no. He, he did say something specific, and I forgot what it was. It is the Holy Spirit according to 1 Corinthians 15 to... 12, uh, 12 to 15. The Holy Spirit according to 1 Corinthians 12 to 15. Yes, yeah, I got so the last part, So it's 1 Corinthians. Right? No, no, no. It's this. It's so it's uh, very specific. Very specific. So it's very <laughs> exciting. And for those of you who like the Galatians series, which we loved, and a lot of people I've heard loved it as well, we're going to continue with... First Corinthians, so very excited. 12 to 15. 12 to 15. The Holy 12 15. Spirit. 12 through. 15. 12 15. <laughs> and if you want more than just 12 and 15, the 9 o'clock service is... Giving you kind of like laying out the First setting for yeah, basically the rest of Corinth and Corinthians. And that will be on F the FOF Plus page. Yes, it will be. Speaking of FOF Plus, we are doing... So we got all kinds of FOF Plus up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. And so we have faith training. Yes, faith right? training. A new faith training guide that'll be on our website for those of you who can't get a piece in person uh at F F can F you see that at all so just it's off of fof plus right where that is gonna be located yeah, FOF. plus for faith training <laughs> 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 we'll get that information for you guys we're at the post show. for the church <laughs> we got this we, we totally handle this it's <laughs> no big deal here but anyway it's 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 a one two six week bible reading plan yep, we're gonna um, roll from this Sunday all the way through Pentecost, or to, up to Pentecost, I should say. Ooh. That's what Ooh. Dave said this morning. So Memory verses on here. I really enjoyed going through Galatians. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, ah. yeah. Are we having communion today? I can't tell. No, no communion. No oh. communion today, I don't think. Okay. No, yeah, no communion today. 
Well, we'll see you at the end. Enjoy service, guys. <laughs> That's bye. <laughs> Let's stand and sit.
coming over Holy Week or maybe even today or even joining us for a, for a number of weeks, months, or even years. Thank you so much for just being a part of this today, coming today. I want to give a quick shout out. Who, who, who here was through a Holy Week service, like Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, any of them. Let's just give a shout out the band, the techs, people working behind the scenes, all of them. I mean, they made it. It's crazy. It's like Easter was a week ago. It was literally last Sunday. And I was sharing this earlier, but for me, it feels like it's an eternity ago already, doesn't it? Um, and yet, here we are, it's seven days later, Christ is risen, he is risen still. Oh, you, some of you wanted to say it's so bad, and I, I just kind of <laughs> cut in there on you. <laughs> and we're living in that hope, it's not about a day, it's about a way of life, it's about a destiny, it's about a future, it's about the fact that he is still alive, and in that, no matter what we face, we have got promise, hope, and life through whatever it might be Two, thank you for coming to be a part of this here today. Hey, look, I want to give a, um, a shout out to one person in particular. Sophie Blay, come on up here just for a second, all right? Sophie Blay. She has no idea that I'm calling her up. But she stood up here for the first half of the service, so it's all okay. Sophie Blay is known by another name at 2 p.m. today. It's Maria Von Trapp. Sophie has... If you know Sound of Music, Sophie has been doing the lead role of Maria these last three weekends while doing Holy Week for us here as well, which is just like mind-blowing how you have a voice left. Her last show is at the Woodstock Opera House today at 2 p.m. Let's just give it up for Sophie. And Evan May, I did not see him, but he is one of the Von Trapp kids. Evan May also goes here to Fellowship of Faith. If you hear Evan, I don't know, but let's give it up for Evan. And for what I'm told, like this brother has got pipes. So I haven't seen the show yet. I'm hoping to go today, but I encourage you, if you've got nothing going on this afternoon, Woodstock Opera House in the square at 2 p.m., let's just make Sophie feel uncomfortable in all the right ways. And... Uh, cheer her on on her last show. We got to practice here at Fellowship of Faith. Our name is intentional. We don't want to be a sea of nameless faces just gathering in a building with no kind of connection with one another. We think God has called us into fellowship. That church is meant to be a community of believers doing life together. There's something we would like you to do this morning, if you would, just to be a very small part of that, but an important part to us. If you just make a base touch with us. We're going to put a number on the screen and just text the word here to 855-465-2720. Again, 855-465-2720. And more significantly, if we can be praying for you, text the word prayer to that exact same number and it'll prompt you to a field where you can enter your prayer request. We really appreciate that base touch. And, uh, and uh, if you're new with us at FOF and, and you leave us that contact information, we'll get in touch with you this, this week and just uh, drop you an email or a text or just say hello. And we're here to help you navigate our church, more importantly, your spiritual life in any way we possibly can. So please take us up on this and, uh, and, and do it. I want to put a date on your grid. It is Saturday, May 7th. Saturday, May 7th, about two weeks from today, we are having a Faith Step workshop. Anyone here for Easter sunrise or Monday Thursday? Seeing these adults and these kids and these teenagers coming forward to get baptized, to profess their faith in Christ, to give their lives to Christ, to take communion for the first time, to declare a desire to be a member of this congregation. All of those are different kinds of faith steps. And if you're here and you're interested in being baptized or maybe having your child baptized, if you're interested in knowing more about what it means to commit to this body as a member, if you're here today and you want to give your life to Christ in a public sort of way, if you're here today and you want to understand more about what this thing called communion is and all of its facets, put that date on your grid. Saturday, May 7th. We start at 9 o'clock we have breakfast free and child care as well. You can register right online on our homepage, fellowshipoffaith.org, and we'll walk you through what those faith steps entail, how to take them, what we believe about them, and answer your questions along the way. I'm going to give my favorite Easter Sunday 
memory, and it was at sunrise, and it was his brother. His name's Mike. And Mike has been coming here to Fellowship of Faith for about four or five, maybe six weeks now. And Mike comes up to me like three weeks before Easter just going, I want to be baptized. How do I get baptized? I want to be baptized so bad. I'm like, well, Mike, I got service for you, man. And so I told him about Easter sunrise. We gather by the fires out there, and, and we have that big baptismal font out there, and, and people are going to get baptized. Well, Easter sunrise comes around, and Mike comes up, and there's like this 10-gallon like water trough that you'd use to like water a horse or something like that. And, and, and like Mike walks up, and he's like, do I just stick my whole head in? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> 25 degrees, cold as could be. The ice skim is starting to form, and Mike just, boom, because that's how bad he wanted, and it was awesome. Mike, if you're here today, way to go, brother, and way to go to all of you who took faith steps on that day. encourage you to do the same. Now, here at Fellowship of Faith, we are 100% member supported. And when I say member supported, I mean member supported. We are supported by the people who commit to this body and call it home. If you are new with us today, you do not need to tune into anything I'm going to say right now. We are just glad you're here. Do not feel obligated. But for those of you who are calling Fellowship of Faith your home, are growing to call Fellowship of Faith your home, or do call Fellowship of Faith your home, thank you for the way that you're supporting the ministry ministry here because it's happening because of what you give. There are seven ways to give. You see them here on the screen. And if you visit fellowshipoffaith.org and go to our giving webpage, you can get more on each of those. The easiest way to do it right now is you could just text 815-201-1499 and through a few simple prompts can even do it right now for those of you here in person. There are buckets in the back. For those of you online, go to our giving webpage and you can give online right there like anything else. All right, one final shout out, one final thing that I wanna share here with you this morning. And yep, there it is, faith training. Here at Fellowship of Faith, we engage in a practice called faith training. Faith training is personal or individualized spiritual practices we encourage you to make Monday through Friday that tailor in to what we're talking about on Sunday. We are starting a new series here today, and with that comes a new round of faith training. If you are here in person, we have faith training cards you could pick up at our info table and our merch table on the way out, and you'll see that a journaling process is part of it. If you'd like to pick up or buy an FOF journal, those are available there too. If you forget it today, if you're joining us online, all of this information is also available at guess where? Fellowshipoffaith.org, and go to the faith training page. Really encourage you to do this. It really enlivens something. I've talked to so many people who did it through our Galatian series, who just said having these daily readings and these debrief times and these other practices, it, it, it did so much to just bring God to life in me. Because God is alive, but it doesn't always mean he's alive in me. You know what I mean? And, and they would share just how it brought it to life. I encourage you to try it. It's pretty simple. Three different tracks you can take depending on how easy or intense you want to go about it, and we'll be doing these through the entire spring up to Pentecost, which is at the beginning of June. But enough on that. Got a new series today on 1 Corinthians, or more specifically, the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 12 to 15. Let's jump on in.
Andrew first promoted that video for me, I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Wasn't that? I got one complaint. He's got this shot of me in there where I'm like, because we always look at ourselves, right? He's got this shot of me in there where I'm like, ooh. Like, just like, kills me, man, every time. You know, this past, uh, this past winter, we went through this amazing New Testament letter called Galatians, and so many of you um, just, just talked to me about how you were seeing it differently and even seeing God differently and seeing yourself and your relationship with God differently about, uh, be, because of it. And, and we talked so much this past winter about how Galatians is all about the gospel. Fundamentally, it's about the gospel. And the gospel is fundamentally about what God has done for you through Christ, not about what you do. But peppered throughout, you may have seen this, was the Holy Spirit. Paul will write things in Galatians like this, that you receive the Holy Spirit because you believe the gospel. He'll, he'll write things like this, that the promise of the Holy Spirit is what fundamentally moves us and guides us and drives us and is the hope to which we yearn. He'll say things like this, that the Holy Spirit through the gospel is sent into our hearts. And because of that, we have an intimate relationship with God. Paul will write it like this, that we cry out, Abba, Father, not referring to a 70s disco band, but using that Aramaic word that was the intimate language of Jesus for daddy. That because Jesus talked to the father with a word that would be equivalent of dad because of the Holy Spirit, we can too. Paul would write in Galatians about how the Holy Spirit gives us a new birth, a rebirth if you will. He makes us something new and that we yearn for a righteousness that comes by the Spirit of God, not a righteousness of our own, making so that the Spirit is somehow transformative. Two, as we started to near the end, it started to escalate. And you can go back and read Galatians and, 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 and keep your eye out for some of this thing you'll see him dancing everywhere where Paul will say, live by the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit, that He's going somewhere and wants you to walk with Him, that the Spirit is in conflict with our sinful inclination and sinful selves, but that the Spirit will birth what is called fruit within us, love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control, and so he culminates the letter in chapter six saying, live to please the Spirit. Live this path of what Paul will call eternal life that starts right now. Galatians is a Spirit-saturated book, and hopefully, if you were with us this winter, it may be awakened to hunger in you not only to know more about the Spirit of God, but, but, but to have more of the Spirit of God in you, to be filled with Him, to seek Him, to identify in Him and discern Him, to live with Him, to, to be able to put into practice what it means to keep in step with Him. This is what 1 Corinthians 12 to 15 is about because Galatians is a Holy Spirit saturated book. First Corinthians is two. And in this, this specific section that we're going to be looking at these next six weeks, we're going to be springboarding from where Galatians left us. Learning what Paul writes about the hows of the Spirit how we get him, how he operates, how he works. And we're going to see some of these misconceptions he comes slamming against in the process because the biggest misconception that I've seen, especially among Christians, including here at Fellowship of Faith, is that people view the Spirit of God 
is something given individually. How does the Spirit come to me? How does the Spirit work in me? What are my spiritual gifts? What is he calling me to do? As though the main work of the Spirit is in an individual kind of relationship. But uh, 1 Corinthians 12 to 15 is going to blow that out of the water because what if the primary way the Spirit of God works is not individually, but collectively? And what if to be in step with the Spirit means something more than just doing my own thing and going my own way as I sense he's leading, but something more communally. And what if the fullness of the Spirit cannot be reached or achieved apart from the body? These are things I'd like you to keep in mind as we jump into this next section of the Bible together. So let's jump into it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here's the opening line. Now about spiritual things, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. Paul writes to him. Now about spiritual things. I'm going to talk to you about spiritual things. A lot of your translations will have the word gifts, but I like this way of putting it better. I think it's more accurate, and I think it's more true to what Paul is getting at, even though he'll get into the subject of gifts very quickly. Paul comes to this part of the letter and says, now about spiritual things. He's been doing this throughout. You can read 1 Corinthians on your own. And you're going to see this phrase pop up again and again. Now about, now about, now about, now about. It's like he's got this laundry list of problems, questions, and issues that these Corinthian Christians are facing. And what Paul is trying to do is go one after another, after another, after another. And now he comes to something that I suspect many of us seem is being foundational or substantive to them all. Now let's talk about the spiritual stuff. Now let's talk about spiritual things. Now let's talk about what it means to be spiritual people. Most of my conversations today, I find most people want to be spiritual, are interested in spiritual things, pride themselves even on being spiritual. It's popular to be spiritual today. I don't always remember it being that way. I was born in the 70s, remember that much of it, grew up in the 80s, certainly the 90s. And in the 70s and 80s in particular, if you said you were spiritual, people looked at you weird. Now, those of you in the younger generations here, you're just going to have to take my word for this, but those of you who are my age and older, you may remember this. Back in the 70s and 80s, very few people talked about being spiritual, and those who did were considered weird. It was some new age guru, it was some hippie who never forgot or never like got to the point of getting beyond the 60s, right? Or, or some kind of like on the fringe kind of person that you didn't know what to deal with. Spiritual people were on TV at 3 a.m. Doing their readings and selling their wares. And for those of you who are younger, yes, we used to have to watch TV on its own timeline. But you know, as I remember it anyway, it was really in the 90s where the language started to change, where people started, normal people started talking about being spiritual more. You'd start to see it creep into TV and movies where characters would talk about being spiritual, the importance of spirituality, of investigating the spiritual realm of life, something beyond just what I would call the crass materialism that so marked the 70s and the 80s, so that we find ourselves today immersed and deluged in spirituality of every kind and making. 
Spirituality is everywhere, and promises of being spiritual are offered by everyone. We do not have to look far, would you agree, to find spiritual wisdom, guidance, or direction. And it can leave us, I think, sometimes groping what is true, what is not, what is good, what is not, what is, more importantly, of God, and what is not. If you've asked questions like these, if you found yourself in that place and even wrestling with it personally, you will identify very well with 1 Corinthians 12 to 15 because these were a group of people who were immersed in all things spiritual. And so Paul writes to them, let's talk about spiritual things. What it means to be spiritual because I don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters. I don't want you to be ignorant. And here's what he says. From the message translation, what I want to talk about now is the various ways God's spirit gets worked into our lives. It's complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everyone else did it. It's different in this life, meaning a life with God, because God wants us to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well as we can. For instance, by using your heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be cursed, nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is Lord, without the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be spiritual? How do we know if we're spiritual? I mean, it's not like I've got an LED, you know, light bar that I can look at in my shoulder and go, huh, I'm about 60% in the spirit today and it lights up and it's like in the amber range, right? Oh, I've got four bars of the spirit when I stand over here. This, you, you, don't you wish though sometimes it was like that? Don't you wish, like, like Lord, how, how deeply am I plunged into your grace? How filled with your grace and your spirit do I happen to be? People throughout history have entertained different ways of trying to determine or ascertain what it means to be spiritual. How do we know when we're in the spirit? Today, I think the most popular way, maybe you'd agree, is we kind of judge it by our gut or more appropriately, by feeling. How do I feel? Because how I feel must be an indication of how present the Spirit is today. Do you know how many people I've met that jump from church to church looking for a Spirit-filled church that upon further conversation equates to this, I just felt it there. Maybe you're here today because you feel it here. A lot of Sundays people will come up to me well, some Sundays. <laughs> Man, that message was great. The Spirit was on fire in you. And how did they know that the Spirit was on fire in me? Because they got enthused. Because it felt good. It did something to them emotionally. And therefore, it must be the Spirit of God. How many times have we judged a worship gathering together on the basis of the feeling that it's created because Steve and the band hit the right chords? Do you know it is very easy to create a feeling, to create an emotional response with certain instruments done in a certain way? And maybe what we're feeling is not the Spirit of God, but our own excitement about something instead. That doesn't make it bad, but it gets very dangerous when we equate the two. I remember a time in my life when God became very, very real to me. 
God has always been real, but it started coming alive in me. And I remember for the first time when I would pray, I would feel something when I would pray for forgiveness. I would feel that spirit wash over me and feel released from sins with joy in its place. Praise be to God for gifts like these. But then I remember when it didn't happen. And I remember when it didn't happen in the time of crisis. I remember when it happened, didn't happen in a time of crisis and emotional agony. Firmly convinced of the opposite opinion that because I didn't feel it, the Holy Spirit wasn't with me. Judging spirituality by your feelings is very shaky ground. Paul will not go there. It is not the way the Bible speaks. And while the Spirit of God might certainly invoke feelings in you, while your life alongside the Spirit of God might result in feeling differently, it is not an LED bar that we can look at or sense to determine how much the Spirit is with us. The problem was no different for these early Corinthians. But they didn't judge it so much by feeling as they did by doing. They didn't judge it so much by feeling as they did by gifts. Look at what God is doing through him. Look at what God is doing in her. Look at the way she talks. Look at the way he speaks. Look at the way that God is doing powerful things right there in some kind of spectacular sort of way. The Spirit of God must be there. And if I want the Spirit of God to, I've got to feel it or I've got to become just like what is being seen over there. Paul writes, that's the way you used to live when you didn't know God. Jumping around from, he says, one phony God to another. Other translations, from one idol to another. From one different manifestation or promise of what spirituality is to another. Chasing spirituality here, chasing spirituality there, chasing the spirit of God and trying to measure by whatever way I can where he actually happens to be doing it because that's how everyone else seems to be doing it. But this section of the Bible, which I love and I hope you come to love too, says, no, no, that's not it. No, the way that the Spirit of God is operating is much different. He works much differently. I want to bring us to this last sentence again. He says, use your heads. Use your intelligence on this. Let's, let's, let's try to understand something. You know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus, be cursed. Seems pretty self-evident. Would you agree? Nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is Lord, without the Holy Spirit. Do you know what it means to be spiritual? From a biblical definition, it means to have the Holy Spirit. That sounds pretty self-evident, doesn't it? But not everyone has the Holy Spirit, mind you. Not everyone has the Holy Spirit. No, No matter how inspired, enthused, emotional, successful, or powerful they might be. Make no mistake, the Holy Spirit is working on everyone, calling everyone, reaching out to everyone, but that is different than having him having him inside of you, being filled with him. What it means from a biblical point of view, from Jesus' point of view, to be spiritual is to have the Holy Spirit. And how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit? You proclaim Jesus as Lord. It's as simple as that. Because what the Holy Spirit fundamentally does is lead you to Jesus. It's fascinating to me that the Holy Spirit is on every page of the Bible, from Genesis 1, verse 2 to Revelation chapter 22. I dare you to try to turn a page in your Bible without finding the Spirit of God mentioned. 
And despite it, do you notice how he's always behind the scenes? He's never what you'd call a lead player. Because what does the Holy Spirit do? He leads you to Jesus. The Holy Spirit understands his work is leading you to Jesus. And you can know that you are spiritual if you believe in him. That doesn't sound very spiritual, does it? It doesn't sound very exciting or glamorous or sexy, if you will. No, 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 I want to feel great. I want to be lifted up. I want to be ecstatic. I want to be gifted in some powerful kind of way. I want to move mountains. That's the spirit. That's not what Paul says. No one would ever say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. And to Paul, that's what it means to be spiritual. But it's so easy to be captured by all other kinds of spirituality. Now today, I'm not going to take you deep into the culture of Corinth. At 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings, we're doing just that. Giving you some understanding of the context, the mile you, the backdrop, the history in which this letter is being written, which brings so many of these words to life. But what I'm going to do for you today is give you a teaser, a little bit of a taste, if you will, of the spirituality that Corinth was offering. Take a look. world travelers, I'm Marty Brown, ambassador of the city of Corinth, the city of glitz and glamour, where the rich come to play and the parents say, stay away. It's no wonder we are called the Eye of Greece. Whatever your reason for visiting, remember one thing, our slogan, what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth. While you're here, be sure to check out the Temple of Aphrodite. Over a thousand shrine prostitutes are waiting to meet your every need. If that form of spirituality is not to your liking, we have many other shrines you can visit. Apollo, Athena, Serapis, or even the Emperor. You could say we're the spiritual center of the empire. Here, you can be spiritual any way you want. If you want to get rich, you've come to the right place. Corinth has one gift to give, money! Strike your fortune, win it big! There's no greater gift that the gods have to give. Come and play or live and stay. Get Corinthianized! I'm Marty Brown, and remember, what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth. <laughs> one person is getting like half-hearted. <laughs> What I love about that video is after watching like the Galatian News where like Matt is playing, of course, like, you know, the news reporter, like how sleazy he captured the role, you know? <laughs> if you can imagine Vegas, Singapore, Bangkok, you understand Corinth perfectly. A place that was offering power and fame Wealth and pleasure in the name of spirituality. To be spiritual is to look like this. To be spiritual is evidenced if I have this. To be spiritual and blessed by the gods is to see it evidenced in all kinds of pleasure and prosperity that I am able to enjoy in my life. Who doesn't at some level chase after these kinds of things? And who at some level does not equate them with being blessed? Oh, maybe not in the exact same fashion, maybe not by the same interpretation, but in general terms, how many of us don't want the Spirit of God to make our lives better. 
the way of Jesus is often different than that. It's no mistake that Jesus was born into abject humility. That Jesus lived unknown for most of his life in poverty. That Jesus died shamefully. I want to share a passage with you earlier in 1 Corinthians that talks about exactly this. Paul writes, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many influential, not many of noble birth, but God chose the foolish things of this world. He chose the foolish things to shame the wise, the weak things to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become our wisdom, our righteousness, our holiness, our redemption. So let he who boasts, boast in the Lord. That the Holy Spirit has a very different agenda than what the popular forms of spirituality both then and now are promising. And what 1 Corinthians 12 through 15 is going to unpack for us is exactly what that spirituality entails, what it means to live by the Spirit. Paul goes on. He writes, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Have you ever heard of the word charisma? Have you ever heard of a charismatic? 12 verse 4, there are different kinds of charismas, but the same spirit, spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of Charismas. Back in the 70s and 80s, Christians liked to divide and debate over who is charismatic and who is not charismatic. Fortunately, at least from my vantage point, I don't see those divisions as strong today. But back then, it basically meant this. Who is filled in a spectacular way with spectacular gifts of the Spirit and says that these gifts are what we should seek versus those who don't. And by extension, which are the churches that live filled with an energy, if you will, or an excitement or a feeling of the Spirit, and which are those that don't? Those of you who grew up in this church tradition, you can guess what side of the fence the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod fell on <laughs> in that one. In many ways to their shame. But not completely. I want to break this word down for you because it's important and it's going to steer what we think about the Spirit of God and spirituality. There are different kinds of charisma. When I hear the word charisma, taken out of a biblical context, what I kind of think about is just like an attribute. Those of you who play D&D, you know what I'm talking about. It's number six. <laughs> Those of you who don't, just go with me. <laughs> Magnetism. Influence. Attraction a way to inspire or influence others. All of these are kind of what goes into what we think of someone who has charisma, isn't it? But it's just a Greek word that means gift. Maybe a little bit more nuanced, a grace gift, because all gifts that we have are from God. It is a grace gift. But you know what's fascinating to me? Not just in this passage, but do you know how the Bible will talk about gifts? Well, after this, Paul will go on. He'll share just a few. He'll say things like this. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. 
To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the interpretation of tongues. Can I ask you, as I read that list, were there certain ones going, man, I wish I had that one? All of these are the work of one and the same spirit. All of them are charismas. All of them are spiritual gifts. But the Bible doesn't stop there. If you read the Bible, it goes on further. Do you know what else it talks about as a spiritual gift? Marriage. In 1 Corinthians 7, marriage is called a charisma. A spiritual gift of God. You don't have to raise your hand, but who of you here are married? That what you have is a gift of God. Now I know that some of you are doubting that right now. (laughs) And if you are, listen all the more. What you have is truly a gift of God. It is a charism from him. Those of you who want to be married, you're yearning for a gift of God. But in 1 Corinthians 7, do you know what Paul also calls a spiritual gift? Celibacy. Who wants that one? (laughs) Those of you who are celibate and likely struggling with it, Paul says it's a gift of God. It is a gift of God. It is a different gift of God. Do Do you see how you can't really have both gifts? How one gift kind of even disqualifies the other gift. And I would say that one isn't even better than the other, though Paul would say on the side, well, I think the celibacy thing's better. I'm a little little freer to do the Lord's work. That guy got burned by a girl. (laughs) To praise God for the gift he has given us as opposed to the gift we think we're supposed to have or what the gift we think is supposed to look like. God manifests his spirit and therefore spirituality in a multiplicity of ways. The Bible itself will even call salvation a charisma, a gift of God, which means broadly speaking, every Christian is a charismatic because every Christian has received the gift of the Spirit and through him, the gifts of God. And Paul will say that there are different kinds, all spiritual, all of the Spirit, different kinds of service, but the same Lord working them, different kinds of working, different kinds of, here's here's the next Greek word, Energema, energema, energe. You hear an English word in there? The same kinds of energy, but all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. The Holy Spirit works. He does something, He gives power. Grace is power. Grace is the power of God. It is the energy of God that he gives alive and at work in you. It makes me think of something that Jesus once said. It was on Monday, Thursday, where he was gathered with his disciples and he said, I'm the vine, you are the branches, right? And the branches come out of the vine. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. It's always struck me as fascinating because obviously they could do something. People do something all the time who aren't in Jesus. I see people who aren't in Jesus all the time walking, talking, eating, many who are successful in life and doing all kinds of hosts of other things, both good and bad. So he can't be meaning they can't do like anything, like I'm just like catatonic, frozen. He's got to mean something else instead. And I love that vine branch metaphor. I think what Jesus is saying is, I'm the power source. The Holy Spirit is the plug. He's the wire that leads to you. In my back pocket, I've got a wonderful device. I love this thing. 
I imagine if my phone had a mind, if it could get cocky, because watch this, and it's connected to nothing. I wonder if my phone could think that it could do just well on its own, be vital and alive, filled with energy of its own power. But do you know what happens to this thing? Especially if I have Wi-Fi and location turned on? You know what happens to this thing. It dies. It runs out of juice. It needs to be hooked in. Otherwise, it can do nothing except maybe to hold my paper in place on a windy day. Jesus says, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. There is so much that I want to talk to you about regarding spirituality. And these next several weeks will do just that. But today, I think it's well enough to leave it here and to simply leave you with the encouragement that to be spiritual is to be in Jesus, that he is the source, the strength, the power, and the flow through the spirit of God of what it means to be a living spiritual being. And the rest of this letter of Corinthians is going to show us how to tap into that. So we're going to pray. Van's going to come forward. I invite you on your feet. And let's ask for him. Let's ask him to lead us to Jesus. Let's ask to find our identity and life in him. Let's confess our rebellions and sins and allow him to challenge us in a new form of spiritual being along his definition together and with him. We pray. Lord Jesus, It is what you have done for us, not what we do for you. It is your life, your death, your sacrifice, your resurrection, by which we come alive, by which we're born again. I think I speak for all of us, Lord. I think. We wouldn't be here today if we weren't hungering and looking for some kind of transformation, new way of living, new way of thinking, intimacy and connection in your presence, looking for forgiveness, grace, power, looking, God, for spirituality. And Lord, we want to look for it in you. We get so dragged off by every promise that's out there, so dragged off by every mode of popularity, by every trend, by every fad. It's confusing, God. And it's so easy for us to blend what the idols are offering with you. There's a lot to digest today. But we ask that you be in the middle of it and bring to light in us what needs to be impressed on our heart, whether it's conviction or encouragement. Lord, we want to come before you as fully aware human beings of the resistance, the ignorance, the sin, the rebellion that marks us. Forgive us in these ways.
Holy Spirit, let us take heart in the fact of knowing that if we are in Jesus, you are in us. And to not doubt, to not fear that we're missing you, that we've lost you. Use today. Use these weeks to come to fill us more, to guide us in what that filling looks like. Lord Jesus, connected to you in your body. May we find our spirituality there. Glory be your name. Amen.
Spirit of God working among those early believers, it led to this. And we've made it a prayer for you today. Go ahead. From Acts chapter 2. May it be your prayers where, as well, and if you would pray it with me. Lord, devote us to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Fill us with awe at the wonders and miraculous signs done by the apostles. Bring us together in common. May we sell our possessions and goods to help those in need. We will continue to meet, breaking bread in our homes and eating together with glad and sincere hearts. Receive our praise, O God. May we enjoy the favor of all the people. Add to our number daily those who are being saved. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor, pour his spirit upon you, bind you together in unity, and give you his peace. Thank you for worshiping today. He died. He rose. May you experience that new life and deep spirituality in him. God bless, guys.
<laughs> welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, guys. You're cutting it close again there, I Tina. Am. <laughs> <laughs> the slogan of the year. We do not want you to be ignorant. No, <laughs> do not be ignorant. We do, do not, not be ignorant. do not be ignorant. What a way to start off the yeah. Corinthian series. I love the uh, phone analogy, the energy. Oh, the Holy Spirit yeah, is our energy. Yeah. Love okay, first that. of all, Dave does not love his phone. No. It is a necessary evil for him. And he's like, I love this. I'm like, what? Who are you? Because he's always complaining yeah. about his phone. Well, you can Dave look and at technology just don't yeah. mesh. And there's times like, I hate your printer. I'm like, it's because you're not using it right. <laughs> <laughs> there's times like, talk to Andrew. He'll he'll get it straightened out. And Andrew's like, what are you throwing me under the bus for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that is a great analogy. No, it really was. Yeah, you still have some life in you. You still have some juice. But yeah, you're on your way out. Right. It's, it's draining yeah. out of you. So. Though the Bible would be weird as I am the outlet. You know, yeah. Instead of I'm the vine. Right, I'm the outlet. Yeah. I'm the I'm Comed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, oh. I've not had. I don't know if it was Comed or Comcast. One of the two. Last week kept cutting out my phone and internet service, and so I was. That would be Comcast. I yeah. assume. Yeah. Comcast. I love it how they say we'll be there between 10 and 11 Tuesday or 10 a.m. Tuesday to 11 a.m. Wednesday. You know, they have a span Ooh, of a day. Yeah. Where they and they not never show up anyways. So. So, Tina, what'd you think? It was okay. Well, we just talked about it, but... Uh, it know. was okay. Yeah. Good way to kick it off? No. Nah. It could have been better. Dave could have done better. Just saying. I, oh. <laughs> sorry, Shots Dave. So fired. sorry, Dave. Where is he? <laughs> Care to elaborate? I don't like when he had open series, because I feel like he's spending the entire message explaining what he's going to do. Like, no, just jump in. Yeah. Just dive in. Yeah. We're, we're, we don't need to be set up. Yeah. I'm, maybe yeah. I'm unusual. Maybe other people appreciate the setup. Well, I think I, I understand where you're coming from. The, those of us who are familiar with Dave's teachings, mm -hmm. we can be ready to dive right in. But yeah. he's addressing the newer crowd, the people who aren't necessarily used to what he's doing. The setup, I think, is nice for those who aren't familiar with First Corinthians okay. or might not be familiar with the teachings. But I see what you're saying. We're ready. Dive on in. But... I Got to have that one And, and, and I got I to say, he did a phenomenal job with Galatians. That I'm like, all right, I'm ready for phenomenal again. And, 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 and that's what I so want to avoid with Fellowship of Faith because we're not about performance. You know, we're not about the, like we had a comment earlier, yeah. we're not about the concert. The concert is a way that we express ourselves, but it's not about the concert. Yeah. And, and, and the people who come here, who lead here, uh, they're not about that. Not even close. Yeah, it's knowing the hearts of those on stage, those are the hearts yeah, that are yeah. teaching, leading small yeah. groups, even running our coffee bar and stuff like that. It's not so not much not about yeah. them, yeah. you know. But. And I guess that kind of leads into, hey, if you want us to pray for you, text the word prayer yeah, to... Yeah, uh, 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 it's been 855 a while. 855-465-2720. Also text here to that number as well, so we know you worshiped with us today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next, next, next. I have written down. Uh, 21.6, the net. <gasps> we want to give a good quick shout out to you guys. Thank you for tuning in to us week in and week out. Isn't I mean, I still can't wrap my head around how we're in multiple countries all yeah. over the world, and they're listening to us speak right now. So hey, that is hey. so cool. I really if you guys want more on Wednesdays from 12.30 to 1.30 is questions you never thought you could ask in church. You can text your questions. Yeah, I believe the number was on the screen most of today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you can text that number. No, I don't know what it is. Uh, Do you got it? It's on the screen. 815-314-0363. There you go. Text that number <laughs> and that uh, they will get to your questions if they have time. I, I, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Bravo. Um, you can also find that on Facebook Live as well, not just the 21.6 and that if you wanted to watch it live. Oh, yeah. yeah, Facebook Live. Yeah. Through 21.6 minute and FOF. Both at the same time. Why so not? We just, all right. Um, it's very easy to create a feeling. What about when you don't have that feeling? Yeah. You guys, that's a big one. I, I, to me, that I feel like the feeling's fleeting. It depends on where mm -hmm. I'm at in life, right? And it's not necessarily that I, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I know what the feeling is because I feel especially when I'm at you know, retreats when I was a kid or yeah. big services here, you get that burning sensation. Yeah. Kind of like Pentecost, like you're breathing fire. You want to go out and just scream all things Jesus. But 
it does come and go. It depends on where you're at in your life. I don't think it necessarily, yeah. when it's gone, it's not a bad thing. It's just... You got to recognize it. It's recognize not the it. feeling. Right. The feeling is, no. a, is a gift. Right. That's but what no, I'm getting at. If That's you guys a good are point. home and you're struggling with your faith, it's not about how you feel. If you're depressed, if you're anxious, it's not about that. It's about God. Spirit is in you. Okay. Regardless, it's always in you. They yeah. Never leaves you. I, I know that's one thing that that Luther kind of taught. Like, well, how do I know if I'm saved? And and his big thing was, were you baptized? Are you taking communion? Okay, then you're saved. Get over it. Right. And move on. Right. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then and yeah. then you live in then then when you start living as though, I don't have to have that feeling. I live in the truth of right. the Holy Spirit is in me. Yeah. And it's almost like if you feel like the you're drained, that your Holy Spirit is drained in you. Find something that charges you. For me, it's worship music. I have a Pandora station that has all contemporary Christian music on it, mm-hmm. and I listen to it Spotify when I feel... Spotify has an FOF worship. They do. I listen and you can to listen to the, the songs we play here. Yep. And, every, whenever and I, I gotta f- tell you, though, it's disappointing because they're not as good as our band. Many, many, most of the songs. I'm like, nah, Steve does not, it better. Yeah, not the same. It's not the same. Well, Lexi's better. Yeah. But I like to I put in my headphones and I just listen to it as much as I can and I feel way better. Yeah. When I was going through a real low point when I was at school, that's all I listened to was Christian music to get that uh, that feeling again. Not, I wasn't going to church. I didn't find a church. They didn't have it online yet. So I was listening to Christian yeah. music and cri- to the worship music and it made me feel so much better. Yeah. Like at ease a little bit. So yeah. Find that little niche. It's reading the Bible or praying or going through a work study or listening to me, whatever it is. Help you find that charger. Yeah. And it's not about getting the Holy Spirit, it's about feeling Re- it. Revamping the Holy yeah. Spirit, yeah. Giving a little bit of a, giving that spark inside of you to realize the Holy Spirit, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> to blow on the flames yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's always there. You just got to remember so that I, it's always there. I have two there. comments about the, the Holy Spirit. And, okay, one of them, I think is, I think the Holy Spirit's an introvert. Ooh. Happy to be behind the scenes. Uh, I'll, I'll sit next to you. And, and we'll have a relationship, but I don't need to be out on the stage. Right. So Holy Spirit's an introvert. And I've also heard the Holy Spirit is like the feminine side of God. And so when God, God, oh my gosh, when Dave is saying, you know, oh, he to the Holy Spirit, I'm like, eh, maybe it's a she. I see. Eh. But that's a... The, the Holy Spirit is life-giving. That's and, very true. That does, yeah, that's right. Because they, they say <laughs> And there's, there's a, 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 not a monk, what's a woman monk? Nun? Uh, well, you is, not, it's a woman uh, monk, a nun? Yeah. I would say. Uh, there's, so, close. There's, there's a nun who espouses this theory, and you don't want, you know what her name is? Phyllis Tickle. <laughs> Phyllis Tickle. That's legit her name. <laughs> Mother Tickle. <laughs> <laughs> that's all kinds of wrong. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What, like- did you, what did you think about Marty Brown? I, I wanted him to have a nickname, Marty the Party Brown. That'd make Marty the Party. See Next that connection, week we Marty got the Party Marty Brown. The party. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dave hit it in the nail on the head, though. He is able to flip from a respectable news reporter to a sleazy car he salesman used the in word Vegas. Sleazy. Like, yeah. Oh, Matt, you're not sleazy. No, he's not. No, but his Marty, Marty the is. Party. Marty is for okay. sure. I love it. What happens in corn stays, stays in corn. Stays corn. So it took me a while to put two and two together. I'm a big Greek mythology guy. Okay. I really like learning about it. I think it's very interesting. My daughter is too. Love yeah. it. So um, I knew Corinth, obviously, is a uh-huh. city in Greece during the ancient Greece times. I didn't put Corinthians and Corinth together until recently. Really? Okay. Never. Never did. I obviously knew First Corinthians and I knew about Corinth, but I never put two and two together until, huh. honestly, a couple months ago. But So it's cool to so think about So like now. worlds colliding your yeah, brain? I know. It's like pfft, so much info at once. But yeah, yeah. Oh. Do you I know mean, what I did today that's like, what should stay do? at home? <laughs> I ran out of deodorant, and I haven't gone to the uh, store, so I wore Dave's deodorant today. I couldn't tell I kind of smell like a man. <laughs> that all, at least it smells good, right? I think so. It's Arm & Hammer. Arm & Hammer. Yeah. It's all natural. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, somebody bought him deodorant because... That's what he asks for Christmas. Interesting. And it wasn't the natural, so he had to return it because he wanted the natural. <laughs> <laughs> he has to be more specific on his uh, Christmas list, Yes, apparently. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what else have I got? Uh, didn't you want to talk about your ducks? Oh, I kind of have a duck update. Oh, no. It just right, sounds so, like a sad duck uh, update. It's been a very traumatic week for our ducks. Oh, no. Because so of the weather? We know from Good Friday that Bartholomew died. 
Oh. He was taken by a I predator. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. You got to watch the Good Friday service. I do. You I will didn't, weep the entire time. It's, it's the saddest. I mean, so, so Bartholomew got taken by a predator. But the other two, one got a gash, but she's fine. Um, and so Friday, Dave texts me at work. He's like, it's not an emergency, but I need you to call me right away. I'm hmm. like, okay. So apparently, Alexander went toe-to-toe with a car. And, oh, no. And Dave sends me pictures, and, like, like, oh. like neck is exposed. Oh, no. I mean, it was, it's pretty traumatic. So, so I rush home. We take, because we didn't have a car. Dave didn't have a car. Okay. I had the car. And so we take him to a vet, and uh, they're like, yeah, he, he got, like, clipped by the bumper and probably, like, went up and, like, wow. Ah, like, uh, try to fly And because he's got, um, like, the, his beak is cracked significant bruising on the inside Aww, um, underneath his his inside feathers the vet said is road rash yeah. and then like his tail feathers are completely stripped Aww. and so we think he got hit spun like hit the yeah. front bumper spun Bad around hit the back bumper oh, no. but the good news is the good news is that he's on pain meds and on an antibiotic and got all stitched up and it's doing really well. She, I said he, but she. Wow, so she's, she's alive. doing really well. She, oh, wow, that's okay. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And next like Saturday, we're going to be getting another duck because there's somebody local to us that had some tragedy, and one of their ducks got taken by a predator. <laughs> so they're looking for a home, and we're like, we have a home. Now, yeah. So we we're going to hopefully next Saturday we're going to get another male duck. Okay, well that's exciting. And his name is Thor Bjorn. Ah. So we had, we had Bartholomew, Thor. and now we have Alexander, Peter, and Thor, Thor. Bjorn. <laughs> and, and when we got the ducks, I'm like, I don't mind if there's ducks on my property. I just want no responsibility. So I've kind of kept, yeah, I have fallen in love with these ducks. These ducks are just pure joy. And now, and I've been giving them the medicine twice a day, and they're like literally eating out of my hand, and it's like... You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. It always seems like the people who are very firmly against having pets always fall in love with them. You know why? Because we know we'll fall in love with them. Yeah, and you don't want, and, yeah. Uh, well, my fiance has guinea pigs. She got them uh-huh. in college, and when she graduated college, she came up to live with my parents and I. Okay. And she brought her guinea pigs. And my mom's like, I don't know. They're messy. They're going to smell. Yeah. She loves the big guinea pigs now. Aww, loves them. Noel. They And they love her. They recognize her voice. She'll come up to the cage. Now that we moved Aww. away, she doesn't get to see them as often, but she got to take care of them a couple times, and they... Love her, and they, she loves Aww. them. So it always seems like the parent or the person who is against having the pet I will not admit this to my kids because they have frequently asked for guinea pigs, and I've always said no. But guinea pigs are such sweet pets. They're adorable, but they're a lot of work. Are they? Oh, yeah. They're... they're yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, uh, they're, uh, they're pretty messy. Meaning, like, there's a lot, to, lot of but upkeep. They're, but it's contained. It's in, uh, def, uh, yes, it takes a, the hay gets everywhere. But uh, that's besides the point. Yeah. They are adorable, but they are a lot of work. Do you so let them run around your house? They are very skittish, and now we have Ellie, our dog. I we make a quick snack good, out of them if they start running mix. around. So um, <laughs> We did before. We had a little playpen where they'd run around. But they are pretty skittish. Okay. Usually, some guinea pigs are like... They'll walk right up to you. And yeah, yeah. Not, not Kevin and Stanley. They're not like that. Kevin and Stanley? From the office. From the office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> so. I can just imagine Kevin. <laughs> Stanley. They are cute. Oh, they are so cute. Funny. So funny. Right. What else we got? I think I'm good. Hey, um, don't forget to download the Faith Steps, uh, the yeah. reading plan and memory plan. You find that at FOF Plus, or if you can make it into FOF soon, we have or the... Or FOF, just the web... I bet I'm sure that there's a homepage. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, wait. Sure faith Steps is. might be having something on the homepage. Either way, you go to FOF. Yeah. Fellowship of Faith. Fellowship... Blah, blah, blah. It's Fellowship of... It's on the screen! Thank you, Steve. I love our support people, because they just <laughs> they, help they us keep so us, much. They keep us faith on track. training, the very first thing. Very first go. thing pops Perfect. up. Faith, what is that? Faith training or Faith Steps? Remember, they're two different things. Faith Steps is like membership and baptism. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. The Faith workshop. Steps is the very next that one. That's the next one. Okay. So there's two different <laughs> ones. Click on both tabs. Learn all about it. All right. We're going we're gonna to stop talking before yeah, we're going to continue to ramble. So have a great Really, guys, we're glad week. you're with us, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah. Enjoy the weather while it lasts, because it won't last long. All right, guys. Have a great one. Bye.